In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the VBA editor. Now, what exactly is VBA? Well, VBA stands for Visual Basic for Applications, and you find it in all Microsoft applications because it's the language that sits behind the application, and it's mainly used for programming, editing, and running application code. So effectively, when you create a macro, what you're essentially creating is VBA code. So it's important that you at least understand the VBA editor window. And whilst you might not get to the stage where you're writing your own macros from scratch using VBA, it is good to be able to understand how to jump into a macro that you've created and make minor changes by tweaking the code. Now, the workbook that we're currently in contains lots and lots of different macros. In fact, there is a macro for each of these worksheets that does different things. For example, the first macro that was run on this worksheet deleted all blank rows. The one on the second worksheet applied accounting format. We then have a macro that formatted this data as a table. Another one that pasted values. The next one added some data bars to a data set. And then we have one that removed hyperlinks from URLs. We also have a macro in here that creates a new blank worksheet. So we have about seven or eight macros in this workbook. Now, if we want to see the code that sits behind these macros, this is where we jump into the VBA editor. And there are a few ways that you can get to it. So the first way is that we could go up to the developer tab and in the code group, we could click this icon just here, visual basic. And you can see there the second way that we can get to the VBA editor. And that is by using the shortcut key of Alt plus F11. So let's click it to open up the window. Now I'm going to maximize this out to make it a bit easier to see, but this is essentially where all of the code is stored for each of the macros. And the VBA editor window is really made up of lots of other different windows. For example, on the left hand side, we have the VBA project pane. So this is where you can see your workbook and all of the macros contained within that workbook. For example, at the top here, you can see we've got the current file name, which is 1105vbaeditor.xlsm. That's my workbook name. And then underneath, you can see all of the sheets with the sheet name in brackets. And then right at the bottom, we have this modules folder, which currently says module one. And if we double click on module one, that's basically going to open the code for all of the macros that we have in this workbook. And you can see that's exactly what I have loaded up in the main project window. Now, one thing you'll notice about the VBA editor is that it is kind of old school in its appearance. If you remember back before we had the ribbons in our Microsoft applications, we were using a menu system. And that is exactly what we still have in the VBA editor window. For example, if I click format, I get a drop down menu and offshoot menus containing my commands. I also have toolbars, old school toolbars, as opposed to ribbons. Now, if we just take a quick look at the code, let's understand what we're looking at. Because the thing is with VBA code, it's not particularly difficult code to understand. And there are definitely some edits that you can make without really having any programming knowledge. So at the top here, you can see the first macro, which is called delete blank rows. And this is the macro, which as you would expect, deletes blank rows from a data set. Now your macros will always start with sub and then the macro name. And you'll notice right at the end of this macro, which is just where we have this line, we will always finish with end sub. Anything you see in green is a comment. And comments in general are kind of like notes in a way that you can add into your macro code to give people more of an idea as to what the macro does and any other helpful information that you might want to add. And comments not only appear in green, but you'll also see that they have an apostrophe at the beginning. And that basically tells VBA not to run these as pieces of code. They're just comments. So if you do want to type any notes at the top of your macro and give your users some advice or some information about how to use this macro, simply make sure you add an apostrophe before you type your text. Underneath, we then have the code which needs to run in order to delete blank rows. So let's take a look at this code. 
Now this first line of code, which ends in dot select, this is as you would expect, it's simply making a selection. So it's selecting the cell range A18 to M22. I can see that then in the macro, I clicked on the cell E18, and then I selected columns A to M. We then have a line of code which basically says select all of the blanks and then underneath we are deleting the entire row before ending up in cell A2. So if I wanted to make a minor modification, maybe I decide that instead of my cursor finishing in cell A2 when I run the macro, I want it to finish in cell B10, I could simply modify this cell reference in here. So I could change that to B10. And effectively, I've modified my macro code. So let's save this and rerun the delete blank rows macro. I'm going to click on save on the toolbar. I'm going to close down the VBA window and we're going to go to the delete blank rows workbook. So let's add some in. I'm just going to insert one there. Let's insert another one here and another one just here. So now I'm going to rerun the macro and what we should find is that instead of our cursor ending up in cell A1, we should find it ends up in B10. So let's jump up to macros. Let's find delete blank rows and click run. Take a look at that. Those blank rows have been deleted and look where my cursor is. It's in B10. So we can immediately see how that small change to the VBA code has affected the macro. Let's jump back into Visual Basic. So this is reasonably simple code to understand. And all of this has been generated simply by me recording a macro. Now, if we scroll down to the next macro and you can see that it's separated by a line, this is the one that applies accounting format. Again, we just have the name of the macro in green as a comment. And this one is basically applying custom number formatting to three columns. And if you remember back to when we covered custom number formatting, this is basically what we have here. We're specifying the format for positive, negative, zero values and text. So for a lot of macros that you run, the code isn't particularly hard to understand. Of course, VBA can get quite complex and you definitely do need to know how to write it if you want to start to write your own macros from scratch. But I will say that for the most part, you're going to be using the macro recorder to generate your VBA code. But it's good to have an understanding as to how to jump into this VBA editor, have an idea as to what you're looking at and also be aware of how you can make minor changes. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.